Live from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Lenovo Transform 2017. Brought to you by Lenovo. We are wrapping up a day of coverage, the Cube's coverage of Lenovo Transform. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with Stu Miniman. We have been here, we've interviewed all the great guests, uh, heard a lot of great content. We were there at the keynote. Stu, what have we learned? Yeah, so Rebecca, they talk a lot about think differently and we're transforming, and we know that there's so much change happening in the industry. Um, on the one hand, I step back and I say, okay, it's a new generation of Intel chipset. That's great. Um, we've said great a few times already. Uh, they've got some people that have been with the company a long time. Uh, YY, the CEO, has been, been, been there for many years, steady at the helm. But there's a lot of new leaders uh, in, in, in the group. Uh, Kirk Scalgan, who we've now interviewed a couple of times. Uh, Kim Stevenson, who we've known, a great Cube alum, uh, talked about why she joined a company like Lenovo. Said they're an underdog, and she feels that they have a great position without the, that legacy baggage. Uh, you know, legacy is one of those terms that gets thrown around. Uh, one of our guests today said, you know, oh, and five years from now we'll be calling software defined legacy because. Uh, uh, I was at a conference, they said, legacy is what you installed yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good um, point, yeah. So, you know, that being said, uh, Lenovo understands, you know, fanatical devotion to that, you know, customer centricity mm -hmm. is the term mm -hmm. they put out there a few times. Mm -hmm. They want to be reliable, they want to be trusted, and they've got metrics and stats to, to prove that they are meeting what they're doing. They're not just, uh, you know, as, as, as John Furrier texted me, he said, there's meat on the bone at this event, Stu, absolutely. So, um, Interesting to look at kind of where they are, where they're going forward. Uh, the server industry as a whole is a bit challenged. Mm -hmm. Storage has been going through radical transformation. Uh, networking's driving more to software to find. Um, and all of that means that there's opportunity for new players uh, to rise through the ranks. And, and Lenovo feels that they've got the pieces to put together both with themselves uh, and with their, their channel and technology partners to be able to drive forward. So when you're, when you, one of the things that we were hearing a lot about is that they are number one in customer satisfaction uh, because they are so reliable and because they have great service. In terms of what, what they were hearing from their customers, we heard this a lot, is that their customers want simple. They, they are overwhelmed sometimes by too much choice. They want nothing too complicated and they want things future-proofed. I mean, is that possible? Yeah, it's, it's really tough. Uh, I did an article a few years ago looking at Amazon, um, and people would say, oh, well the hyperscale companies, they use commodity off-the-shelf hardware. I mean, Intel chips everywhere, what's the difference? Well, I wrote, Amazon actually hyper-optimizes. They have to build for one data center, it's their own, so if they build an application, it's 10,000 or 50,000 servers that they can build for that env exact environment. Now, Lenovo leads to live in data centers around the globe. So where can they simplify and standardize and where do they need to fit, fit around the world? So it, it's great that they can have a common form factor uh, for a power supply, but you know, we've got different power uh, usage uh, you know, in various places around the world. Um, but they do need to be, uh, customers want help to be a little bit more opinionated and to simplify what they're doing. Uh, I, I talked to a CIO a couple of years ago and he said, we were really good at, you know, give us a big chunk of money in 18 months and we could build a temple to our application. Today, I need to be faster. I, I need to be able to build, uh, be more modular, and a lot of that means that I need to have architectures that are more software driven. Uh, I still need redundancy and availability in the hardware, but I'm, I'm not going to build, uh, you know, that, that monolithic infrastructure for a specific application. I need something that's, that's more flexible. And, and it, Lenovo understands that, and they've taken the assets that they had internally, uh, added the, the pieces that they've gotten from IBM, and, and are driving these pieces forward. Uh, and with a lot of partners, as we said, interesting stuff coming from Microsoft on Azure Stack was one of, one of my favorite interviews, talking about that mixture of I need standardization um, but I also need some flexibility right. uh, in, in what I'm doing. Do you think that the product launches that we heard a lot about today at the keynote and also in our interviews today, do you think that they will, how much do they need move the needle forward is what I want to ask. Yeah, uh, great question because uh, as Kim Stevens told us, I mean the last year, uh, if, if you look revenue and units, uh, Lenovo didn't do great. Um, so they, they've got the piece together, the, the new generation, They've talked to their customer base. Uh, 
I think they understand what they're going to do in the hyperscale, what they're going to do in the enterprise market, and what they're doing partnering on kind of converged, hyper-converged offering to, to put those together. Uh, it's, some of these things are really easy for us to track. We come back a year from now and we'll say, okay, the quarterly tracker's done by some of my peers in the analyst industry, you know, the, the, the numbers don't lie. You know, customers will vote with their wallets and we will be able to say whether or not they move the needle. It's great to say number one in customer support, but if you know, your competition's growing and you're shrinking, there's only so far that'll go. Well, that's just what I was going to ask you. I mean, is it enough? And 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 what do you, what do you predict? I mean, can you can you can you look into your crystal ball a little bit and say where you think we will be one year, five years from now? Will Lenovo be the underdog? Yeah. Um, so. Lenovo's in a really interesting place because they do have that global footprint. They are doing, when we talk to Kirk, it's where are they in the hyperscales? It's companies like Baidu and Tencent. Massive, massive growth. They can ride that wave. When the Skylake, Ar Skylake architecture is available, uh, you know, pretty soon from Intel, they know that they're going to get an influx of, of business to be able to drive that. They're also getting into some of the West Coast hyperscales, as they said. Um, the enterprise is a little bit slower uh, to uptick on that adoption, so you know, I'm sure Lenovo will be able to give us by segment how they're doing and how they're growing. Um, they should be reaching the point that we should see the ship uh, be, be, be turning around. Uh, we saw this story uh, when Lenovo had purchased the PC business from IBM, you know, over a decade ago, and you know they, they, they sunk for a while before they eventually uh, started to rise. And now, now they're number one in the world. So they are trying to repeat history, uh, which is challenging to do, even if they know the playbook. Uh, uh, Lenovo. If you look at the margins that they run on, they talk about how uh, they, they can live on slim margins, they understand that consumer side of the business, they've got a lot of good pieces. Um, and competing against the, you know, the, the ones ahead of them in market share, prim primarily US-based companies, uh, and they're fighting it out. You were at Dell EMC World, Dell and HPE, they are fighting it out, it's going to be a death match. Um, you're, you're going to see them just trying to beat the heck out of each other. And, uh, you know, reminds me of, uh, can, can, can Lenovo be the Abe Lincoln on the side saying that, you know, I might not have been the first choice, uh, but uh, at the end I could end up the winner uh, because everybody else kind of And then all of its apart. partners as a team of rivals. We, we can do this. We can, we can, there we you can, go. We, we started yeah. this morning talking <laughs> Hamilton, uh, and now we're going we're Abe learned. Lincoln. We're, yeah, you know, yes. New York City, you know, used to be our capital here, so uh, we're bringing it full circle. Exactly. So... Let's talk also about what, we, what we've been hearing from Lenovo employees and executives about the, the culture here. And we, we hear time and time again how it's very flat and how decisions are made, it's, it's collaborative, there's a lot of teamwork, uh, there's a lot of listening that goes on, not only to colleagues, but also to customers. Do you buy it? I mean, I mean it, it, what yeah, do you so, think? so, what do you so, so right. So one of the things, you know, I've spent a lot of time on the converge and hyperconverge infrastructure solutions. And one of the things you could spot really easily is if the server and the storage teams aren't working together, that CI solution didn't do well. Number of companies that didn't do there. Lenovo, primarily they have some IP, but a lot of what they're driving is really through partnerships. So at the center of it, it's the server team. Storage is coming to look more and more like you know x86 servers, and they're running on top of that. Networking is tied closer to the server, so uh, they actually don't have you know this big structure that they have to overcome. Unlike some of their competitors, they have uh, you know a sizable team with a good position in the market chair. So I do uh, buy a lot of it. I've been in analyst meetings with Lenovo uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, their messages are all in sync. It's not. Oh wait, I heard one group and I heard this group, and you know which way's the future. Uh, so th th they are making some progress. Um, of course, I'm really interested to see uh, who they might pick up from an M&A standpoint. Uh, there's been rumors for the last couple of years as to some moves they'd make. Uh, their competition has, you know, not been sitting still. We, we've seen, you know, Dell obviously made a lot of big acquisitions, including the really big EMC uh, piece, HP has bought another number of companies. Uh, Cisco, actually, their server business, which is the UCS, um, really seems to have plateaued out, so they had been the driver of change in the storage, in the server industry uh, for the last, gosh, you know, uh, you know over five years. Uh, so there's that opportunity for the next horse to try to take the lead, uh, and once again, Lenovo feels they're there. I think they have, you know, they've got the resources, they have a reason to be on the track and to drive that forward. 
whether or not they can execute on uh, remains to be seen. And you know they've got, uh, you know they, they've they've looked at their channel, they looked at their sales team, uh, and they know what they need to do. Now they, they and they've need made to go the changes it. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, so culture wise, I mean something you study real closely at a lot of businesses, Rebecca. What did you hear today? What'd you like? What did you want to hear more about? Well, I was really fascinated by what Kim Stevenson was was saying, talking about uh, the greater numbers of women in senior leadership roles, and and also the greater numbers of people of of people of color and how and how important that is in terms of how Lenovo goes about making its decisions uh, thinking about the customer empathizing with the customer and really and really understanding where to go from there and then also then how it comes back in terms of making the decisions to, to go to market with which products so I thought was really fascinating and I think that she's right I mean particularly at a time where all you see are the headlines about this machismo culture that is so pervasive in Silicon Valley and in the technology industry. And so to see, you know, YY on one hand and Travis Kalanick on another, and you just can see these very different models. And, and so my, I'm hoping Lenovo is the one that really prevails in the end here because this is, I think, the future, the future of work, the future of the workforce. And so I would like to see see this this model of leadership and of teamwork prevail. Yeah, it's a different type of event here. It's nice. It's very yeah. intimate. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lenovo obviously knows how to do some cool things. The layout here, it's a beautiful facility here yes, yes. Uh, in, in, in New York City. The keynote had some, you know, funny yet, you know, good videos. Yeah, uh, bells you and know, sometimes yeah. Uh, they, they fall a little flat uh, when, when you go to some of those keynotes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Lenovo needs to continue to build their brand uh, outside of the uh, uh, of the, the consumer space right, and, right. and be known more in the enterprise. Uh, and, you know, th they have a chance to ride some of those waves. Yeah, yeah. Well, this has been a great show. It's always so much fun to, to co-host with you on theCUBE. I love it. It's All right. really fun. Re Rebecca, crew. thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, I'll actually, uh, Kirk Scougan is going to be back on theCUBE next week. I will be with Dave Vellante at the Nutanix next event in Washington, D.C. We have done so many events with theCUBE. Uh, of course, as it says on the sign behind us, uh, thecube.net is where all the videos are. Uh, I'm sure it will be record-breaking for us yet again as to how many shows, how many interviews we do. But uh, Rebecca, so. it, it, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you again, and thanks so much for joining with me, uh, you know, the, the quick train ride down from Boston. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Stu. That wraps it up for us at theCUBE. This has been the Lenovo Transform Conference. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Thank you so much for tuning in.